when when you're able to hurt the guy more than anybody else if you're able to piss him off more than anyone else if you're able to make him jealous more than anybody else if you're able to make him to just give him a very emotionally painful experience by your actions and your words that means that he has attached his self-esteem and his ego to you you will only know how important somebody is in your life if you give them space you will only know how important a TV character is to a TV show only once they die. You will only know how much you really love somebody when they die or when they disappear from your life. That's when you may not really think you love somebody, but then let's just say that person dies. All of a sudden, you might even surprise yourself that you really miss them because those are repressed those are repressed emotions that are repressed simply because a person is there. Simply because a person is there, right? And so when you're when you disappear in a guy, naturally, or the the guy or the girl, naturally, when you pull away, he should feel he or she should should feel like he misses you. And this person should contact you, should call you. This person should not be all comfortable at you being on vacation. This person should be consistently messaging you, saying they miss you. Or even not, or even not saying they miss you, but all of a sudden they call you more. All of a sudden they text you more. Why? Because they, they're afraid of losing you. They don't know what's going on or they realize your value. But the point is, in your absence, the guy, should be, the guy or the girl should be making more effort. Sometimes a guy likes you. But you're giving him all the time in the, of, the, of day, but he doesn't decide. He feels like you're always going to be there. And he or he even senses weakness from you. That's why he's not taking, he's not taking, that's why he's taking his time to decide because he knows you're always going to be there. Um, and, and, and from that situation, I remember the, what I felt was jealousy. What I felt was jealousy and what I felt was a realization of her value. And the reason why I felt that realization of her value was because somebody else valued her. And because somebody else valued her, I want to value her. And you got to realize value is, is, is based on, is, 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 a, social, is a social thing. It's, it's something that we all agree upon. If you don't know if, you don't know if something's valuable, you'll know it's valuable if you see somebody else valuing it. And all of a sudden you want it, which makes sense evolutionarily speaking. It makes a lot of sense to do that. Wants to have activities with you. Not just bang you, right? But to hang out with you, to watch a movie with you, to go to the park. Why? Because he wants to experience that chemistry in different parts of his life. In terms of dopamine, it feels good. So you want to experience that high of dopamine doing all the activities. Go to the museum with you. But if he only hangs out with you at home, doesn't doesn't think about doing other things with you, then that he, he doesn't feel that chemistry. It, it's just that simple. When you like somebody, you want to experience activities with them. Plain and simple. The thing is you're not seeing anyone. You're communicating that you're not seeing anybody. You're pretty much removing competition. In any, in any area of business, if you let the competitor know that nobody is, um, is trying to get what they're trying to get also, like that other people are not bidding, are not on the bidding war, you're pretty much lowering the value of that product. So you have to communicate that you're seeing other people. The problem is that when you like the guy, you pretty much hide the fact that you're not seeing other people. Even if you're seeing other people, you hide it because you are afraid that it could potentially make them get turned off. Um, so you want to communicate that. Put them in a sexually competitive state. But at the end of the day, a guy will see you as wifey material if he really loves you. You could be a crackhead. And if he loves you, he'll see you as wifey crack material. Trust me. It doesn't matter what you are. As long as he likes you, that's all you need. So men's number one manipulation strategy against women is love bombing. The reason why that's the number one strategy is because the way that you make a woman fall in love is not through her eyes, it's through her ears. It's letting her know how much you love her. It's letting her know how special she is. Get the fuck out of here. It's letting her know how you're the only one for me. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here with that bullshit, right? And, and, and if you fall for that, that means you're somebody who's either looking for love or you're somebody who's an empath. And so you pretty much show your heart. You walk around with an open heart. And that makes you susceptible to men who are manipulative and know the strategy of love bombing. Love bombing, they'll tell you they love you. They'll give you flowers quick. They'll, they'll do everything that you want to. And as soon as they feel like they have you, they'll pull away. And then, like the junkie that you are, you'll start chasing them after them. And that's how they get you. Um, and unfortunately, when people are too present, when people are too there, there's no mystery. 
there is no sense of insecurity when somebody is around consistently because unfortunately too much presence reveals weakness and it actually represses emotions of love um, in your absence they will when you give a guy or even anybody guy girl space um, people forget all of your sins they forget your neediness they forget your faults they forget the reason why sometimes they hate you right by just giving somebody space they will forget all of the needed needed behavior and when you return all they see are the good parts because at a distance people don't see the details of you at a distance they only see a general view of you and so it's almost like it's almost like if people hate you if a group of people hate you all you got to do is just disappear for a few months or even like a year or so and then you return and they and they literally will talk to you with an open mind and and almost like they're trying to say okay let me reacquaint myself with this person and all of a sudden by you by them reacquainting themselves with you they either and they can literally create a you can literally you have a chance to create a new image in their minds because they forgot that don't you remember that for example if you have a friend that you don't like and then all of a sudden you hang out with them let's just say you have a friend that you like right that you don't like and you stop talking to them and then a few years later they hit you up to hang out and you kind of forgot what you didn't like them then you hang out with them and then you're like oh that's why i didn't like them right that oh I, well, that's why i didn't like them is you for is is just the power of distance distance will literally forget will, will literally make you forget the negative things that they've done you want to have if you see yourself as a respectful person or come across as, as a pygmy chick when we come across as too hard when we come across as too strong too much intention can you express how much you really want something it pushes people away so the first step is this okay understand that too much reaction to the guy will cause you to come across as a pygmy chick you laugh at every one of his jokes with too much intensity you share too much you talk too much when you talk too much you're pretty much communicating that you're a needy person so calm down with the intensity Stop responding too fast to his text messages and too fast, even with your words. When he talks to you, stop responding so fast. Stop speaking so fast. You learn to tone down your reactions. And that even means that when you really like the guy, you kind of tone down your facial expressions. So rather than being at 100, you tone it down to like a 50%. If you put conscious awareness and conscious effort to do that, you're, 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 you could fix that part of, of being too reactive to the guy. The other time to drop the games and to keep it real is with your partners when you're in a relationship with them. The only games when what I would tell you to play with with people who you're married or in a relationship is to give them space. That's the only game I would tell you. Don't suffocate. Learn to pull away. Learn to get, give your man um, room to breathe if you're somebody that's too suffocating. That's the only game I would tell you to give them. But if you're feeling insecure at something that he's doing, if if you want him to contact you more, I would advise you to just be direct and tell him that. You know, but the only games I would play, right, is the whole concealing how, how, how can I say this? The only game I would play is just give them space. Just, just give them space. Give your man time to live his life and also give yourself space from home. In other words, have things that you do without home. Now, it's, it is strategic to do things without home because it actually makes them chase more, but it's also smart. Because it gives him space, it makes him wonder, what are you doing? As long as you don't have a history of cheating, give yourself space. Do things without him. Don't invite him out to, to your dinner with your friends. Don't invite him out to do this to, to, to your alone time. Have your own alone time because that will make him chase. Studies have been shown that when a woman notices that an attractive man is making eye contact with them, their brain releases dopamine. But they've noticed that when a, an, an unattractive man is looking at them, their brain releases uh, um, the stress hormone cortisol. Do you do you want to know the only time when an unattractive man releases dopamine in a woman? Studies have shown that the only time an unattractive man that a woman sees unattractive, the only time he releases dopamine is when the motherfucker looks away. <laughs> when you guys are away from each other and you guys return, you guys don't miss a step. In other words, if you guys are away, so after like the second day, third day, fourth day, when you guys see each other, let's just say you didn't see each other after a week and you guys return, you guys don't have to have that, you guys don't feel that awkward like, so um, so what you did yesterday? No, it's more like, yo, did you see? Like, it's more like, 
it's, it feels more of a cool friendship. You guys don't feel like you have to create chemistry. You guys don't feel like you have to make conversation. It just happens. And then it doesn't matter how long you guys been away. It just happens. Does that make sense? What are referring to is just having low intention, high attachment. That's pretty much the whole point of not giving a fuck is developing that mentality where you have high intention. You want to be with this person, right? But also you have low attachment, which is it's almost like a friend telling you, let's go to a party and you're excited and you're in your in your mind. You're saying, oh, OK, the concept of a party is good. And you're saying to yourself, I cannot wait to go to the party. But then your friend says, actually, there's not going to be a party. And then all of a sudden you feel a letdown, but it doesn't last for too long. Or better yet, you're on your way to a, to a certain country and you're excited. But then they tell you the flight is canceled. And you're, you're disappointed, but you're able to move on. That's what I'm talking about. High intention, high attachment is you, you get you have high intention, you get disappointed, and you're not able to move on. All right? Is that he wants a relationship with you after four months. If after four months the guy doesn't want a relationship with you, what you felt doesn't exist. Like, what you felt doesn't exist. Because when you have good chemistry with somebody, I don't care how hot you are. You want, you want to be with that person. That chemistry becomes an addiction. It becomes a drug. And you want to be with them at all time. And as long as you create space from time to time, he's going to be addicted to you. Okay? So there's no excuse. If a guy doesn't want a relationship after four months, he just doesn't like you. It's that simple. You could... That projection is activated two different ways. You behave similar to the ex or you look similar to the ex. But the point is, is that you're going to try to recreate and fix, to recreate the same scenario, but fix it this time. It's almost like if a, if a dog dies, you have a, this, this hole in your heart. And as a result, you buy a dog that looks similar to the dog that died. Let's say you're on a date with a guy, right? And he tells you, so he tells you, so you want to hang out again? Rather than saying yes, you be like, um, maybe, yo, I'll, I'll let you know when I get home. Like, I'll let you know. Um, sure, that, let me check my schedule or be like, um, maybe that depends on how busy I am this week. Like, if he asks you if you want to hang out again, just be like, mm, maybe that depends on how busy I am. Okay? So, then when you go home, be cold. Don't text him too much. Don't call him too much. But then suddenly, pop out of nowhere and be like, hey, let's hang out. The reason why this works is because it makes him think, oh, wow, like, does she like me? You know, it makes him think about you when you're not there. Like, that's pretty much the whole point of this. Um, so that's the, one, of the perfect, one of the best ways to finish a date. Revolutionarily has meant surviving. So what you want to do is learn, is learn to ha have a different interpretation about these events. Or lower your, lower, your, um, lower your expectations. So what you could do when you first meet people is expect things not to work out. Expect it not to work out. Say to yourself, this is not going to work out. Say to yourself, this is the last time this, I'm going to see this person, right? And the reason why that is is because if you keep telling yourself that, your natural, your natural instinct is to be hopeful. Your natural instinct is to believe that things will 100% work out, right? And when you do that, the reason why is because it's much better to think about that. You know, what people want is their imagination stimulated, Right. People want to think about that kind of stuff because it's fun. But also that imagination usually comes with expectations. So what you want to do is lower it. It's, and by having that is you can do that by having self-talk, telling yourself it's not going to work out. And I call this rationally negative. You're negative on purpose to lower expectations. Other things that you could do is literally create distance. Right. If you're in a group of people or you're dating somebody and you care about what they think, literally having distance and coming back will change the way you see them. Having that distance and then coming back will change the way you see them, the way you perceive them, the way you perceive their opinions. And you might even see how ridiculous it was for you to even care about this. Distance gives you a, a better sense of proportion and, 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 and it gives you, it, it allows you to sense how important something really is to you. Right? So just separate yourself from the situation for a while and you'll notice the emotional distance and the emotional intensity will lower. Essentially, the way you learn to be direct with a guy is one, I would prefer that you're direct with people who don't know your social circle. That means people who are, who, who you meet online or people who are not in your social circle, right? After that, if you have to meet a guy in your social circle, 
I would prefer that you first start giving him hints that you like him. First start giving him looks, prolonged looks, because guys get the hint. Guys associate intense eye contact with attraction. That is the best way to be direct, right? If the guy doesn't get the hint, my best advice for to be direct with a guy is to invite him to a group outing. Say, hey, me and my friends are doing something. You should tag along. Let me know if you want to tag along. That is the best way. You don't, you never ask a guy out on a date. You never do any of that kind of stuff. You invite him to an outing with your friends or invite him to an activity. Say, hey, I'm going to a running group. Do you want to tag along, right? Do activities and then after the activities, if he likes you, he's going to ask you to do something with him after the activity, all right? So initially, after you do that, at, you're done inviting him out. Let him do the rest, right? So initially, to be direct, ask him out, right? And if he doesn't ask him, ask him out only once. And after you ask him out once, then let him do all the work after that. You don't over pursue. You don't you you, you don't push the issue because that makes you look so super needed. You not caring will naturally, or, or you not being available for this person will naturally increase your perceived value. Right, especially if they, if you as a person have low self esteem, if the other person who doesn't want us, or is not available for a relationship, their perceived value goes up. They become so expensive that we cannot afford them per se. Evolutionarily speaking, it will have been an event, event, it will have been an, an advantage to mate with the most valuable mate. So, the way to flirt with a guy if you're a shy girl is just to be there. You let him flirt with you. He, if a guy likes you, he will flirt with you. If a guy likes you, he will try to get your attention. All you gotta do is just look at him, say yes, smile, and just be there like a fucking statue. Like you're just there. You don't need to do much. Even if you're a girl that doesn't talk much, let the guy do all the talking. Let him try to impress you. You do not need to flirt. All you gotta do is just be there, say yes to the date, and let him do all the work. Let him ask me how to flirt with you. Now you ask me how to flirt with the guy, all right? So if you're a shy girl, you wanna learn to flirt with a guy, you don't flirt. You just listen, you agree, you're there, and that's it. He should be the one that's thinking how to make you laugh, not the other way around. Anyways, if you guys like this video, follow me, um, hit the like button, subscribe, and I'll see you later. The reason why it's important to make your man jealous is because you have to put him in a sexually competitive state in order for him to remember how valuable you are. When he doesn't see other guys around you trying to bang you, he's not going to realize how attractive you are. That's the truth. I, the most beautiful girl I was with, I took it for granted because I teased she tried her best to hide all of the guys trying to hit on her so I don't get jealous. But as soon as I saw somebody who was hitting on her, somebody who was trying to flirt with her, all of a sudden I realized that this woman is unbelievably beautiful. So what you got to do is show home that there are guys around you trying to have sex with you. You don't have to f bank the whole football team, just insinuate it. And you'll notice how he all of a sudden will start tr um, trying to impress you a lot more often. Right? Other things that you could do is having some having more options. The more options you have, the better the perspective you have about this individual. If they're the only options that you have, their value naturally is higher. If you have multiple options, your their value naturally is more realistic. Let them know that you see other people. Like I, like I said that yesterday, but I just want to reiterate that because it's so simple. For example, you'll be like, um, by the way, I t my friend took me to dinner last week and blah, 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 right? Very subtle, very subtle thing. Um, so letting him know that you see other people, you'd be like, oh, by the way, I, I see other people. You know, it's simple. The reason why this works is because it makes him competitive. It makes him realize that they're not the only one. And also, if you do cancel on a date or if you are busy, it makes them think even more about you because they think, oh, maybe she's she's out with somebody else. See what I'm saying? So that's a very simple line. It makes them want you more. It makes them more jealous. And it makes them more possessive about you. Communicating that he's not your that he's your type. When you tell a guy that you're my type, when you insinuate that he's your type, right? When you say that you look like my ex-boyfriend, you're pretty much saying, hey, I like you and I want you to know that. Learn to hide that kind of stuff. Because when you hide that he's not your type, when you hide that he's your type, 
you're pretty much making him guess whether or not you he you like him back. You want him to keep guessing. But when you communicate, if this dude looks like Leonardo DiCaprio, tell him that your type is 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 Tyrone the personal trainer, obviously you're gonna make him say, Okay, what the hell? Like, why am I not her type? What did I do and stuff like that, right? So just learn to hide that with you. Keep that to yourself. Let him the second thing is um, it, this qualification, for example, I hate when we're going to say this, but it really does work, is something like something along the lines of even though I'm around you and I'm being super nice, it doesn't mean I like you. That's just how I am by nature. Like, I'm very super friendly. Heck, I mean, I'm, I'm, on, I'm out on a date with you, but it doesn't mean I'm going to call you back, <laughs> right? Anyways, and change the topic, right? Just saying, talk, saying that you are naturally nice by nature and that you're naturally very friendly that doesn't mean you're gonna see them again letting them know that's how you are makes them say fuck so she looks like she likes me but i sort of cannot take those signals seriously because she's saying that's just how she is so that makes them think more you see that's the point that it makes them more uncertain it makes them doubt their thoughts and doubt their belief systems sometimes chemistry is a one-way street chemistry sometimes when you like them so much your mind could be so enamored by them, they're not even looking at reality. You begin to attribute traits to them that doesn't even isn't even there. And we assume things about people, and, and especially when we feel chemistry, we have to be careful to think as rational as possible because the chemistry is going to cause you to, th to see things that don't even exist. Okay, so don't become a chemistry junkie, become more rational. Whenever you feel strong chemistry with a guy, it is a sign for you to take a step back, don't see him as often, Give create some space so that you can think rationally and assess him properly. What we want to do is be able to go towards reality as much as possible and not go into our own little fantasy. The part of the brain that, that stores memories where you can consciously remember them is not the same part of the brain that was mostly fully activated as a child when you were perceiving the world and you weren't able to formulate thought. The way that you re you still remember things from when you were a baby or even a or even a toddler, you remember it, but not the way you remember thoughts today. You remember them in as a form as a, in, as a form of an emotion, almost like a fossil, an emotional imprint that that you consistently feel this discontent. You consistently feel this weird depression that comes over you and you ask yourself, what's the source of this? What you really are doing is having another form of remembering. It's, it's, it's an emotional imprint that you remember through feeling because as a child, you really didn't experience the world through words. You experience the world through images and emotions, right? And so you remember your past, your neglect, you not receiving love, not through a conscious remembrance, but through a pre-verbal way feeling it you feel that the third one is um you want to speed things up lord have mercy those are the worst ones most guys will get turned off by those women so what most guys do is that they just they're nice and they leave you you know they're nice they're they're nice and they, and, they, and they let you walk away right and and that's because you demanded too much too soon guys have too much bad experiences with psychotic chicks man and usually the psycho chicks want a relationship soon. And the reason why is because they need to show their friends and family a relationship. If they're not doing it for you, they're doing it for other people to watch, you know? So that's why, you know, when a guy sees that, that you want a relationship soon, back the fuck off, man. Like, it's much better to start off wanting something casual and letting things unfold. All right, ladies. So finally, I have released my second course for women, which is natural chemistry. This course is a five week course, five week course where every week you're gonna get a new set of videos based on based on specific issues. Th this course is all about how to create and maintain the attraction in any man. This will help you create love. This will help you deepen the love with your man. This is not about manipulation. This is not about playing games. This is genuine, genuine, natural chemistry no more short-term partners no more being fooled why because i will reveal to you not only how to create attraction in the first week but also how to understand male nature how to understand their tricks how to prevent from being a too attached signs that he's the wrong guy signs that he's a narcissist signs that he's a mama's boy signs that he's an emotionally available guy emotionally unavailable guy
We go over everything. We go over this third week, setting boundaries. We go over the third week, controlling your emotions, right? Setting boundaries, fourth week, fifth week, embracing your masculine and the feminine, right? And on top of that, I come, I have over 10 different bonuses, 10 different bonuses, my Lord have mercy, right? With, with a money back guarantee. The bonus are one, the natural chemistry, over 10 hours of content, right? The breakup formula, how to deal with a breakup, right? The connecting with your man, right? Establishing a life of abundance, social mastery, understanding your dark side, the goal setting seminar, which is about how to set and achieve goals, practical mastery that will teach you how to master anything. The laws of human nature. I will come that I have a book club for the laws of human nature where over four hours of content, right? The Transformational Seminar in a Pocket, which is my mindfulness seminar, and the Chase audiobook. This is a this originally is $1,800, but you get it starting at $97, ladies and gentlemen, right? $97. We have different packages, but all of this starts at $97. And you know what? You can check it out for free if you want. Yeah, for all the freeloaders, I have free videos just for you. Free videos, all right? So you could just check it out for free and then you could get out. Nothing wrong with that, all right? So, and on top of that, it comes with a 30 day money back guarantee. No questions asked. That's right. No questions asked. I don't mind. I just want you guys to check it out because I know when you take one look, you're going to want to buy it. I can promise you. Just like my other course, um, the psychological the psychological game of attraction, it was a hit. You're gonna love this one. This one is not about manipulation. This is genuine natural chemistry. Order it now. All right. I'll see you guys inside. Peace out.